I'm here with Dr. Romano to do problems on aromaticity. Come on over, I'd like to show you a couple of problems for the DAT exam. You can actually read entire books on this, on aromaticity, but I'm gonna give you what you needed to know to ace the DAT exam. Aromaticity imparts a very, very unusual stability into a molecule. So the first thing you wanna remember is aromaticity goes hand in hand with stability. In order to be aromatic, usually you think of a benzene ring, but other types of systems could be what we call aromatic. And there's four things we must look for. One, it must be cyclic. The second thing is the molecule must be planar, must be flat. A good friend of mine, Professor Emeritus of Princeton University said it the best, benzene is flat as a pancake. So we wanna make sure something is planar or damn close to planar. The next thing is there must be a certain number of electrons, pi electrons associated with this molecule and those numbers are 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, and 22. Beyond 22, it begins to break down. But if a molecule had those pi electrons, you would say that it conformed to what we call Huckel's rule. For example, if I gave you benzene, as you can see, every time you see a double bond or an electron pair, it counts as two. So this is two, four, six. So you would say to me, this has six pi electrons. So in addition to being cyclic, planar, and having a Huckel number, by the way, if you ever forget these numbers, two, six, 10, 14, 18, 22, just remember four N plus two. So if N is a zero and you just plugged in zero, four times zero plus two will give you two. Four times one plus two will give you the six. Four times two is eight, plus two gives you the 10, and so forth. So the fourth condition is the molecule must be, as you can see in benzene, fully conjugated. So that means that at every position, you need a p orbital. So if you looked at benzene, I'm gonna take these double bonds away for a minute and just redraw this a little nicer for you so you can understand what I'm trying to communicate here. If you looked at benzene, instead of the double bond, I'm gonna put in a p orbital. So as you can see, at every position, there is a p orbital here, and therefore electrons can delocalize. Let's try a few examples. In letter A, we have two, four, and the dots count as six. So this has six pi electrons. We're gonna assume most things are planar unless otherwise noted. So this is cyclic, it is planar, there is a Huckel rule number of six, and I'm hoping you can see that every atom here would be fully conjugated. So you got P orbitals here, 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 and of course this nitrogen, these electrons are in a P orbital. So this would be considered aromatic. Likewise, you count, this is a DAT favorite type of question. If you have two electrons here, notice a positive charge means there is an empty p orbital, like an empty parking space. So as you can see, that means that those electrons can delocalize. Molecule is planar, and since they can delocalize, fully conjugated. All of these criteria are filled for the cyclopropenium cation, so this would also be aromatic. Now we come to something with four pi electrons. Notice four is not a number. If you ever see four pi electron system, I want you to be very careful of something. If it's cyclic, this is, it is planar, it is fully conjugated, but you have four pi electrons, that is the kiss of death. That is called anti-aromatic. And that means that this molecule is very reactive and very unstable. So this is anti-aromatic, my professor used to call this molecule the beast. It is known as cyclobutadiene, and it is one of the most reactive molecules in all of organic chemistry, and it's anti-aromatic. In this example, it's the same idea. You count two here. When you have two dots on the outside of a carbon, you do count them. So once again, four pi electrons, and this would be another system that's anti-aromatic. Now we go to letter E, which is a little tricky. 
first of all, we look at this and we say that, okay, it's cyclic. We agree on cyclic. The question is, is there a hokal number here? Well, two, four, six. We have a hokal number. But the question is, is it fully conjugated? If you look right here, this represents an sp3 carbon. Now, if there's an sp3 carbon, that means there's no vacant p orbital. There's no empty p orbital available for delocalization. That means the molecule is non-aromatic. So even if it has a Huckle rule number or not a Huckle rule number, even if it had a four or an eight, if you see an sp3 carbon, this interrupts this array of p orbitals and therefore it makes the species non-aromatic. So it will behave very similar to a classical alkene. Let's do a few more advanced problems that I put on the board for you. Now, if you looked over here on letter F, in a molecule like this, I give you two, four, six, eight, ten. There's ten pi electrons. We're going to assume now that we have fully conjugated, but the question is, is the molecule planar? I want you to look here. Uh-oh. These H's, there's not much room inside here. So that means that these H's are going to bump into each other. And if they bump into each other, the molecule becomes non-planar. So that's sort of a tricky question. So if you get something that looks like this, look at the inside, and if there's contact, especially if the ring is reasonably small, such as a 10 pi system, it would twist itself out of planarity. That's a hard question. Let's go to here. When you first looked at this, you would say, all right, I see that everything is cyclic. But if you looked up here, there's an sp3 carbon. So that means that that top ring system is out. Forget the top ring. So just look at the bottom. So you're just paying your eyes are on the naphthalene system. Two, four, six, eight, ten. All the electrons can fully delocalize. So this is a 10 pi system that is aromatic. Here's a trick question that's a hard question. It's always seen on exams. First thing, you got two, four, six, eight. And you're very tempted to say, well, it's a, it's a four or an eight would be an anti-aromatic system. No one wants to become anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatic is very unstable. So what's going to happen is the molecule is going to try to twist itself like an angry beast. If you remember the beast we saw earlier, this guy was doomed. The beast is so doomed that he makes an attempt to twist himself and he actually stretches himself and makes himself rectangular. So even though you see in books, it looks like a square, it's really a rectangle, but he fails miserably. It's still miserably unstable and he can't undo the anti-aromaticity. But as you can see, this molecule called cyclooctatetraene is able to uncouple its p orbitals by twisting in a conformation known as a tub. When we have the tub, we're decreasing the anti-aromaticity. And therefore, because it's no longer planar, this molecule is non-aromatic. Next question is letter I. This is a hard one. You got something like this. The best thing to do is to draw the resonance form of this. So if you took this and I move these electrons out, I would come up with something that looks like this. I'm hoping you can see this. And you have two pi electrons here. So if you can draw a resonance form that's aromatic, that means the whole molecule would have somewhat aromatic characteristics. So therefore, this molecule is going to be aromatic based on the fact that the contributor of this is an aromatic species. Last but not least, something like this. This is a hard question. And once again, when you have two rings or you got a hetero atom, always look for a resonance form. Well, if I was able to move these electrons to here, I would get something like this. Now, if you look at the top ring, two, four, six, there's the top ring. And then the bottom ring, two, four, 
Let's see if, give me one second, sorry about that. If I move to the bottom ring, I get four pi electrons. So as you can see, in a problem like this, in which the top ring, that top ring is aromatic, top ring is aromatic, and then this bottom ring is anti-aromatic. A problem like this is sort of about a draw. It would be non, it would be essentially non-aromatic. So if one ring is aromatic and the other ring is anti-aromatic, then you would have to go to the experiments and to see is there slight anti-aromaticity or slight aromaticity. For, for something like this on the dat, you would basically call this non-aromatic. Um, ideally, what I would love to see is a ring or a situation in which one ring would be aromatic and then the other ring is aromatic. But in this case, that wasn't what happened. One ring got six and the other ring only got four. I hope this clears up how to do some problems on aromaticity. I would anticipate in the data exam for you to get really easy questions. But if you know all these, you're ready to go for that 30. All right, I hope that helps and clears things up for you guys. Bye-bye.